Hi guys and ladies, welcome to another video. Today we have a this is not a top 10 video on the note of T. And uh, this video came out basically because I was talking with my good friend Eura Rose, um, our channel Ramsey's in-house perfumer, and uh, he was telling me how much he likes the note of T. We started talking about a couple fragrances that had T in them, and he's like, I like that one, I like that one. I said, you know what, this is a great idea for a video. I haven't done one on, on T yet. Um, and so I figured that uh, we would go ahead and do it. This is not a top 10 on T, but I have a surprise for you guys, a surprise unboxing. And uh, I love doing these unboxings because it really shows you kind of what I'm going for, what I'm buying, that kind of stuff. But this is not something I bought. This is something that was sent to me um, by Kevin and uh, one of my subscribers. Thank you, Kevin. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, these kind of people that I've come across in the fragrance industry that have just completely blown me away. I mean, I wasn't, uh, wasn't prepared to... Um, you know, to, to come across such kindness and generosity. So thank you. It really does mean an, mean a lot. Um, so so let's see. Let's see what he sent because I have no idea. It's a surprise. It could be a sample. It could be a bottle. It could be anything. Um, so let's get the handy dandy unboxing knife out and let's see what Kevin sent me. I'm very grateful to everybody who sent me stuff to get my nose on, to experience, you know, different fragrances that I've never gotten to smell before. It's, it's you know, it's through the community that I've been able to really expand my palette so much over the, um, over the last six months or so. Uh, so, let's see what we got. Okay, so we have a box. And inside of that box, we have samples. Um, let's see what they are, shall we? First up, we have uh, Tiziana Terenzi Ursa. Um, I've never smelled Ursa. I've wanted to smell it for a long time, so this is amazing because, um, is Ursa the one? I can't remember which one Ursa is. Is it the one that's supposed to smell like, um... Straight to Heaven Extreme or Straight to Heaven by Killian's. I have Straight to Heaven, so I'll do a comparison video if that's the one it's supposed to smell like. Uh, and then we have uh, Le Maroc Pour L by Tower Parfums. Uh, never, never smelled the first two, so this I'm very excited about. This is apparently from uh, Scent Split. Exciting stuff. Um, hand decanted sample, five mil, independently rebottled by Scent Split. I think I heard Persolase talking about this one before. This uh, Lamarck Porel, amazing, amazing stuff. Oh ho ho ho! Amouage imitation woman. Wow. What a treat. I have Imitation Man right here, and I love it. Look at the dent in my Imitation Man bottle. That is my dent. Um, so I am floored to get to experience the woman's version. That's amazing. Blessing. Um, okay, and finally in this little box, we have Nishane's Nefs. I heard about this. People have asked me if I've smelled it before, and the answer is always no. So um, I'm very excited. This is a great... Oh, there's a second box underneath it. Man, you guys are too much. Um, let's pull out the second box. Amazing, amazing stuff. If it's anything like the first box, I'll be floored. It is like the first box. Wow, uh, what do we have here? Wow, Frederick Malls L'Eau d'Hiver. That's exciting. I've never smelled that before. Oh. And then we have Arrakis by Tiziana Terenzi. Man, Tiziana Terenzi's stuff is strong. 
Ganymede, Ganymede by Marc Antoine Bawa. How about that? I can keep up with the uh, duck across the pond. Uh, he did some first impressions on Marc Antoine's Bawa stuff. I could I could see how someone would say that is um, you know a, a, a easy niche uh, or a mass appealing niche just from the ad oh god sundowner oh yes sundowner I have been wanting to smell for a long time never have gotten the chance can't wait can't wait to wear all these I'm like I'm like a kid at Christmas right now such a blessing thank you thank you thank you honestly I don't deserve it but thank you um I'm gonna set these aside I'm gonna just put these right here and we will come back to them well, where will I put these I'm starting to run out of room uh we'll just put this over here for now okay so let's get to the this is not a top 10 tea fragrance video shall we uh so before we do that we are going to do scent of the day and today i'm wearing something amazing uh and i do have to say i hate this box though this box is insane i'm wearing roja's great britain which comes in this box that probably costs more than the fragrance um honestly if they would just get rid of this lacquered box with the engraved ooh, the engraved signature and um if they would just get rid of the fancy silk inside that the bottle sits in and just sell me the dang juice and knock off 250 bucks i would be all for that although i must admit i must admit you know fair is fair and I must admit that I like the purple cap, okay? Oh, wait a minute. We have a, we have an intruder. A piece of, we have a piece of paper over this. Come here, you. You're going to leave the gold plate. This is another thing. If I could just get rid of this gold plate and knock a couple hundred bucks off, I'd be happy. I just want the juice. I just want the juice. Okay, here we go. Ready? Ah! How dare you! It broke on me. All right, let's try again. Ooh, tell me that's not satisfying. Look at that. Great Britain. Um, you guys know my love of leathers, okay? Oh, God. I'm wearing this today. <laughs> And um, look at the atomizer. See that? I hope you could catch that. I love Roja's atomizers. That pressurized atomizer, whatever they call it. Um, oh, God. This, this fragrance. This is my problem with the House of Roja Dove. Like, I'm, I'm literally torn in half because part of me literally despises the fact that everything he makes is a take of something amazing from the past. PDLN3, Eau de Hermes. Great Britain, Queer de Russie, and Queer Canage. Danger, Heritage. Um, you know, there's always something. There's always something that it is inspired by. Uh, danger for women, Samsara. It's, it's just... It, it starts to get old, you know what I mean? But then I wear something like this, where Diaghilev is inspired by Mitsuko and Rocha's Femme, with a touch of az Azure uh, from Estee Lauder in there. But then I wear something like this, and I go, my God, like if, if I had this bottle when I did my top 100, this might have been top 10. This is one of the best leather fragrances I've ever I have one of those 7.5 ml decants of probably most Rojas I could find. I probably have 20 of them. And this is the only 7.5 ml atomizer that I owned and still own. And it's still 90% full or whatever it is. And I said, I need a bottle of this. I just, I need it. It, it is, this and Diaghilev are his two greatest masterpieces. But this 
is the only thing that can compete with Diagalev as far as quality fragrance. The What you're hit with when you first spray is one of the most beautiful buttery oris, iris, irisy oris butter feelings I've ever smelled in a perfume. The oris in this is absolutely mind blowing. And then you get to the leather and then you get to the animalics and it's just... <sighs> so that, I mean, that this is my problem with the House of Roja. Um, is it is, um, it, it, it does stuff like this with this ridiculous box, this magnetic box, you know what I mean? This lacquered box, which is probably pretty expensive. Uh, I mean, it has damn hinges on it. Uh, and, and, but I just want the juice. The juice is amazing, but I shouldn't be a thousand. It should not be a thousand dollar fragrance. It just shouldn't, but God, it's good. Um, so that's my scent of the day. And I'm loving every second of it. Okay, let's do, this is not a top 10 tea, shall we? We're going to start with the decant first. And we're going to start with a decant of a Pierre Bourdon that I don't own a full bottle. But I will give this a full wear one day and do an um, early impression for you guys. This is Good Life by Davidoff. Now, um, this has tea in the base, but it has fig leaf, melon, which melon, we talked about how Rudnitska used melon in Diorella, and Pierre Bourdon is a Rudnitska protege. And so you get the fig, you get the melon, you get the black currant. It's kind of fruity and fresh and green, but that fig leaf gives it this green, this succulent greenness. And then there's a floral heart um, with this almond base and sandalwood, amber, and tea. And the tea, you know, for me, when I think about fragrances that have tea in them, they're very... Um, yesterday, if you watched my first impression of Aris Ladore's Oud Zen, you'll know we talked a little bit about that Zen concept that, you know, puts you at peace, that meditation. Tea does that for me. Tea is the perfect meditation scent or the perfect stay-at-home scent or whatever it may be. Uh, and this has a little bit of that quality to it, but this has this designer feel to it that doesn't, you know, don't go pay $500 a bottle for good life for men because it's discontinued. Just don't, don't do it. You'll, you'll, you will not be happy with yourself. Um, Lancaster was the final distributor for this and then they discontinued it. So, I mean, if you find a bottle at a good price, get it. I have what about Adam by Yope? And I find that I enjoy wearing that just as much. It kind of does the same thing for me, even though they're different fragrances with different notes. But um, Good Life for Men is first. Next. Next on the list, I'm going to cheat a little bit because this fragrance actually doesn't have tea in it, but it feels like it had has a tea note. Um, to my nose anyways, it has that tea like feel that relaxed tea like feel. And this is Mont Blanc's Star Walker. Now, Star Walker, uh, according to Parfumo, it says the production was apparently discontinued, which is a shame because this is the only, um, Mont Blanc fragrance I liked enough to buy. And I actually got a tester, and it's uh, Inter Parfums is the distributor. And you can see the notes right there. So the top notes are pink pepper and star anise, heart notes, sandalwood, and um, cedarwood. And then the base is amber and musk. But there's this gingery bamboo-like feel to this fragrance with tea. And I don't know where the tea is coming from. Because there's no tea note listed, maybe it's the bamboo, but whatever it is, if you like tea fragrances, if you like some of the calming tea fragrances I'm going to talk about later in this video, get this while prices are still cheap. If this is truly discontinued, this um, Mont Blanc Star Walker, you will, you'll be glad you picked up a bottle. This used to be a cheapie, I don't know if it still is, but I think I got this tester, this 75ml tester for like 20 bucks. You know, something uh, un unbelievably cheap. <sighs> Great Britain, my God. Um, 
I, I don't even have the words to talk about Great Britain. Uh, okay, next, we're going to go to Kenzo, and we're going to do Kenzo Jungle Pour Om. Okay, now I also have Kenzo Jungle for women. That's a fantastic fragrance. But the one with the tea is Kenzo Jungle Pour Om. And we're going to talk about something, a tea note. There are different tea notes you're going to find in perfumery. There's just normal tea, like you're thinking of. There's black tea. Most people know how that smells. The tea note that's going to confuse some people is mate. Uh, and I think the E has that little um, asterisk on top of it, kind of like cafe has the asterisk on it. Uh, but it's basically a South American tea. They've been drinking it in Paraguay and places like that for centuries. Um, but it, it has this, almost like this, um, this strong bitter and vegetal smell. And you'll see it referred to as yerba mate. So yerba mate, it's like a ritualistic um, drink. Apparently the caffeine content in mate tea is through the roof. Um, but it is a, a major South American thing. If you look up mate, uh, you can find it now in the U.S., of course, and stuff like that. But it's, you know, used in the U.S. It's marketed as like weight loss and concentration and digestion and all that stuff. But it's also used in perfume. And this mate tea note, um, which again, has this uh, very strong bitter-like smell. And uh, it's found here in Kenzo Jungle Porom. Uh, and Kenzo Jungle Porom is an Olivier Cresp creation. And this is one of my favorite Olivier Cresp uh, fragrances ever because I love the spiciness of it. This is, if you're a fan of spicy fragrances, there's this perfect nutmeg cinnamon combination here. And it mixes with the lime and the mate tea perfectly. Uh, and for intermediate weathers, like today it's going to be in the 70s here in Texas, this would be perfect. Uh, because it has this benzoin and this woody base. So there's guyac wood and cedar wood. Uh, but the mate tea note here makes it very interesting, very unique. And my bottle is an older bottle. It is before... Uh, Kenzo got purchased by LVMH. Uh, I've never smelled the new stuff, but you know me, I like to go for the old stuff when possible. Uh, so I got a vintage, I got a, I got a vintage bottle. Um, so that is Kenzo Jungle. Now the next one is going to be a Van Cleef and Arpels, and it is called Midnight in Paris. Now, Midnight in Paris um, is this discontinued unicorn that everyone now knows and loves, but Midnight in Paris used to be like Starwalker. It used to be a $20, $30 fragrance that no one wanted. Then it got discontinued, and prices went insane. Uh, it is one of the most beautiful bottles you will ever find. Uh, look at this bottle. It's absolutely stunning. The star constellation, uh, supposedly what the constellations would look like if you were in Paris. Um, the only downside is that my atomizer broke, so I have to be careful with it. Uh, but it still sprays, and the, clap, the cap clicks onto place. Uh, and it has Midnight in Paris right there at the top. Just a gorgeous bottle. Van Cleef and Arpels they are suckers for not continuing this line. They could have done Midnight in New York, Midnight in, heck, Midnight in Texas, I'll do it. Make me, uh, you know, make me brand ambassador. But uh, I love this fragrance. It's an Olivier Polge who is, you know, he's a god now at Chanel, but this is a, during his earlier days. This is 2010 when he was doing a lot more designers. He did the original Dior Homme in 2005. This has this ro rosemary, with citruses at the top. It's that designer leather note, that easy to wear leather with Lily of the Valley. Uh, there is Lily of the Valley in um, Midnight in Paris, which is important because May is actually Muguet month. Uh, and so there is a video coming on that later this month, hopefully. Uh, but um, it, it also has this Amber, tonka bean, frankincense in the base. But if you go back to the mid, that's where the mate tea sits. And so this also uses mate tea. 
And if you are a fan of designer fragrances, but you want something that maybe smells a little bit different, a little bit off the, a little off the beaten path, but not so niche like, you know, we're talking Great Britain, which I could just smell Great Britain all day. Uh, but go for something like Midnight in Paris. If you can find a bottle for cheap, I know it's hard, but if you can find a bottle for cheap, um, get it. Get it. It's, it's one I would recommend. Great designer scent. Okay, next is going to be a Creed. And this is a Creed that uh, is very overlooked, I would say. This is Creed Tabarome Millicime. So Tabarome Millicime came out in 2000. Um, I don't know who the perfumer is, but it's basically a fresh tobacco scent with tea. Okay, so tobacco and tea. Very strange combination when you think about it, especially because this uses the classical traditional Creed DNA. Okay, so it uses ginger, bergamot, mandarin orange, and lemon, and then it has this jasmine, sandalwood, vetiver heart with musk, tobacco, and tea in the base. And when you first spray, this fragrance starts out with a very green tobacco feel, and as the hours pass, as it dries, it turns more and more to a fine tobacco. But if you wanted a tobacco fragrance to wear in the warmer weather because it has that Creed DNA to it, Check out Tabarome Millicime. This is one I would highly recommend. Um, but as you can see, I have the 75 ml bottle. I don't buy Creed's in the 50 or 100 ml bottles. That's the cutoff for me. I did it once uh, with um, Himalaya. And uh, I, I won't do it again. Uh, even though I'm sure that some of the reformulations are fine. I just, I just won't. I just, I just refuse to, uh, because I got burned on a couple of them. And so now I just stick with the older ones and that 50 to 100 ml, um, changeover is like the line in the sand for me. So, uh, if you want a fresh tobacco with some very relaxing tea, this is a relaxing fragrance too, even though it's a tobacco scent, there's this amazing freshness about it. I need to wear this soon. It's a perfect spring summer scent for me. Um, Creed Tabarome Millicime. Again, most people don't think about Tabarome from Creed being a tea scent. Most people don't think about Midnight in Paris being a tea scent. Most people don't think about Kenzo Jungle being a tea scent. So tea is sometimes used as like this, you know, uh, like this amplifier to just make, to just add that little extra touch that you're not expecting. Most people don't think about tea as a perfumery ingredient. Let's put it that way. Case in point is this next one. Everyone says this fragrance, which is L'Instant de Guerlain, Eau Extreme. So this is Lidge, um, but it doesn't have the black border. I have one that has the black border in hiding uh, in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the fragrance cellar for safekeeping. Uh, but this one, uh, it, when you talk to people about it, they basically say a couple things. They say, oh, this is Star Anise with patchouli and cacao. Those are the main notes most people are able to pick up. The anise, the patchouli, the cacao. But there's tea in the heart. And when you realize there's tea in here and you wear it, it is very noticeable, actually. That tea with the um, floral heart, there's some jasmine and narrowly, and then the base goes to a cedar and hibiscus. Hibiscus is another very rare note to see in perfumery. So there's hibiscus, with tea, and that's why this is such a relaxing scent to me. In the winter, oh, perfect, because that patchouli and cacao is just like, just engulfs you in warmth. I absolutely, I absolutely love this fragrance, enough to get a backup. It's not my favorite Guerlain of all time, but it's it's up there. L'Instant de Guerlain, Eau Extreme, Pour Homme. Now, just so you guys know, they did away with these bottles, as Guerlain is known to do, and they released it in the new Listerine bottles under, um, I think it's L'Instant de Guerlain EDP. EDP is the O-Extreme, EDT is the EDT. Uh, and then they did away with the Listerine bottles, and now they're in the um, 
they are in the square bottles that look like uh, this, the Lone Ideal bottles, basically, is how it will come. But if it says O Extreme on it, or I'm sorry, if it says EDP, you're getting the same fragrance. I've had people tell me that it's the same fragrance. Don't go spend big money on the old bottles. Guerlain does good reformulations, that kind of stuff. But this is what the bottles will now look like. This is a good fragrance too, by the way. There's no tea in here. But I'm a big fan of the uh, Extreme. Okay, next on the list, we're going to go to a Diptyque. Uh, the only Diptyque with tea in my collection. And this is a fragrance called Tempo. Awesome artwork. Absolutely amazing artwork. Uh, Tempo is another Mate tea fragrance, but it's Mate Absolute in this one with Indonesian patchouli, bergamot, pink pepper, violet leaf, and clary sage. Clary sage can sometimes give off like this sweaty like vibe, like you're smelling like masculine sweat. And some people don't like that clary sage feel. Doesn't bother me at all. Um, but I will tell you that the violet leaf is prominent here, so it does feel like you're smelling an 80s, 70s fragrance because of the patchouli mixed with an 80s fragrance because of the violet leaf. Uh, but that Mate Absolute adds that twist to it that you just don't expect. And if you're a patchouli lover, um, speaking of artwork, check that out. Absolutely beautiful. The snake coming through the volcano. Um, lovely stuff. I love Diptyque's little artwork, and you can see they have all these little psychedelic things going on here. If you look close, you can see mushrooms up top on the right. You can see like an elephant, uh, just all kind of crazy stuff. So, Tempo. Uh, if you like old school patchouli fragrances and you want something new in a design, in a niche, check out Tempo. Okay. Next tea fragrance is going to be Dune Pour Homme by Christian Dior. And you can tell the older bottles that actually say Christian Dior, not just Dior. So that's one way to tell the age of the bottle. But this is basically a fig fragrance. It uses fig leaf and fig tree bark along with, um, along with, um, Black currant leaf, basil, sage, uh, rose, sandalwood, tonka, vanilla, and cedar. And um, there's a note of risotta in here. And uh, I forgot, to, maybe this one didn't have tea in it. Or maybe I just said it feels like. This is one of the ones that feels like it has tea in it. Although there is no tea note. So this is very similar to Star Walker. But I don't think there's a, a listed tea note here. But it gives that very relaxing vibe, you know, if you're if you're into the tea fragrances and, and you want an easy to wear fragrance for the summer, check out Dune Pour Homme. All right, next, we're going to go to a, a Balenciaga fragrance. And um, this is a Gerard Anthony, the master Gerard Anthony. Uh, this is Cristobal Pour Homme. And Cristobal uses tea with coffee and Artemisia in the top with white pepper. Very strange opening to this fragrance. You don't see many tea and coffee fragrances. Just like I said earlier, oh, that's really good. Although it's a designer, it's, it's really good. Just like I said earlier with Tabarome, you don't see many tea with tobacco. You don't see many tea with coffee fragrances. It's a little bit unique. Um, and there is this uh, floral heart, geranium, coriander, nutmeg, sandalwood, and then the base is amber, benzoin, tobacco, and vanilla. So this uh, is also a tobacco and tea fragrance, but it really amps up the vanilla. It's much more, um, it's much more designer feeling than the Creed that has tobacco and tea in it. This is probably Gerard Anthony's most designer feel fragrance. Um, if you like fragrances like Givenchy's Pie or something like that, check out this. Check out um, Cristobal. It is discontinued, so it's hard to find. It's got that very interesting um, 
back and it looks beautiful from the front. Uh, love the love the bottle, um, but uh, it's sad that this is one of Gerard Anthony's last fragrances in my in my collection. But um, this has a lovely tea note in the top, and if you search for it, you will smell it. Okay, now one you're going to have a hard time finding the tea in because this is so well blended. This is another Roja, and this is actually discontinued. Um, and this is discontinued because they released this fragrance in a parfum version that they're now charging twice the money that they were charging for this Eau de Parfum that I have. It just, you know, I, I, that's what I say. I'm torn on the House of Roja. This is Oligarch. This is the Eau de Parfum. And you can tell the caps are, if you, if you go back to the cap I showed you on Great Britain with the, crisp, the, the Swarovski crystals or whatever, this doesn't have that. It's just kind of gold here. This is to signify the Eau de Parfum instead of the Parfum. But either way, this is more than enough fragrance for anybody, to be honest with you. This is a very long fragrance. Even though it's an Eau de Parfum, it wears like a Parfum. Uh, and there's a couple notes in here, a couple like 20. Uh, and there's uh, bergamot, lavender, lime, lemon, and thyme in the top. Orange blossom, jasmine from grass, coconut, and there actually is coconut in here with lily, champaca flowers, black currant, and apple. This is basically like a dry chifra, dry fruity chifra, if you will. Um, there is a note of grass, like literally fresh cut grass, and then that's where the mate tea comes in in the base. So there's mate tea, galbanum, pink pepper, anise, patchouli, oak moss, cedarwood, juniper berry, vanilla, birch, iris, amber, tonka, leather, ambergris, and musk, as most rosas are. It's very complex. Um, you might even smell like a berry note. Sometimes you'll get like raspberry or strawberry. It's a, it's a fruity chifra. But for a guy in summer, uh, if you want to smell posh, like, I've got to go to the office next week and throw a suit on for picture day. I might wear this. I mean, it's it's absolutely, people smell this on you and they, and, you know, they know you're wearing something posh. It has that, I mean, it does make you feel like an oligarch, although right now maybe they want to change the name with what's going on in the world. But uh, that's neither here nor there. This is a beautiful fragrance. One of the reasons I never got Terre de Hermes, to be honest with you, because I have oligarch, which... Some people say is Roja's take on Terre de Hermes. Um, I don't know about that. I'm, maybe it's inspired by Terre de Hermes, but I don't think it smells very much like Terre de Hermes, especially in the dry down. Okay, next we're going to do a Bulgari, and this is the one that, if you like Midnight in Paris, this is the one that you have to smell because it's uh, it came before Midnight in Paris by... A pretty long while. This came out in the late 90s, 1998. And this is called Bulgari Black, the hockey puck. Um, this is an Anique Minardo creation. And I don't know about, you know, different versions or reformulations or anything like that. All I know is I'm happy to have a bottle because I hear it's discontinued. Although it says it's still available for purchase on Parfumo.net, so I don't know. But this is basically bergamot with green tea. So there's a little bit of a twist here. Green tea with jasmine, sandalwood, cedar, amber, leather, musk, and vanilla. And this does have a little more leathery vibe than um, Midnight in Paris. So this is a little bit more uh, rubbery. It, it does really smell like you're smelling uh, like a rubbery tire. This could easily be like a tire, you know, that you're smelling. And so it's a very unique fragrance. I have to tip my hat to Anique Minardo. And that green tea note is a stroke of brilliance because, you know, you're smelling something that's woods and leather and vanilla, and then you get that green tea in the top, and it's like lovely, lovely fragrance. Um, completely unisex, smells amazing on a woman, smells amazing on a man, Bulgari Black. Okay, next. We're gonna do a, a niche fragrance, Clive Christian, in the ostrich box. Ostrich box, me lord. What do you guys prefer? Do you prefer uh, lacquered box by Roja, or do you prefer ostrich box? 
Uh, I don't prefer any to be either, uh, to be honest, but uh, ostrich box me, Lord. And there she is, Clive Christian C. Now, Clive Christian C will smell very similar to Tuscan leather, okay? Which you're going to say, there's no tea in Tuscan leather, and you're right. But there is tea here. They've added a couple things. So it's like Tuscan leather with mate tea and tea in the top. Elemi resins, thyme, mandarin orange, lemon. There is that raspberry note from Tuscan leather with um, cloves, orris root, jasmine, cardamom, rose, saffron, definitely saffron, cinnamon, cistus, amber, tree moss, costus, guyac wood, leather, musk, oud, cyrax, tobacco, tonka, vanilla, frankincense, cedar, and cypress. <sighs> Great fragrance though. I actually have begun to prefer this over Tuscan leather because it doesn't go as sweet into the dry down when I when I compare the two. Maybe I'll do a comparison video one day, but it's tough for me because when I wear one of these, like when I wear Tuscan leather, even like wearing Great Britain today, I did a comparison video back on the early days of my channel between Great Britain and um, Queer de Russi by Chanel. And I just wanted to you know, wear one, like when I would smell one, I would say, oh, that's the one I want to wear. And when I would smell the other, I would say, that's the one I want to wear. So it's hard to do these comparison videos because sometimes, you know, I just want to wear Clive Christian C or I just want to wear Tuscan leather, you know. So comparing them is, it takes a real effort, you know. Uh, okay, next we're going to go to what used to be a cheapie. I think it is, uh, I think this might also be discontinued. I don't know. Um... But it, I got this for very cheap, 25 bucks, I think I got this bottle. And it's, um, it's a fragrance that is supposed to give an homage to the, to the great designer, Oscar de la Renta, and it's called Gentleman. Now, as you can see, Oscar de la Renta loved dominoes. Some people say this is a tacky bottle. I think this is a great homage to the man. And this is a fragrance that has a black tea note in it. So we've done green tea, we've done tea, we've done mate tea, now we have black tea. Now, um, Fragrantica says oolong tea. I don't know, I think black tea probably hits closer to the mark. Um, but what's interesting about this fragrance to me is there's a champagne note in the top. So you imagine, you know, uh, champagne, dominoes, maybe like a Cuban top hat. That's what I imagine when I smell this. I literally imagine Oscar de la Renta sitting at the table, smoking a cigar, drinking his uh, mimosa champagne in the morning. It's that kind of a fragrance. There is a little bit of this celebratory vibe to it. But what's interesting about it is the base has a beautiful uh, vetiver note in it. So it stays masculine. Although I think of champagne and fragrance as like a female thing. Um, there's a lot of feminine fragrances that use champagne, uh, that pizzazz, you know. And this, even though it uses the champagne, it also has cardamom, the black tea, rosemary, geranium, amber, Haitian vetiver, labdanum in the base. It reminds me, and I've never heard anyone else say this, so maybe I'm insane, but it reminds me of Amouage Boundless, which I own a full bottle of. It's back here somewhere. Um, uh, but uh, gentlemen, for the price... I get just as much joy out of wearing this as I do Boundless. Boundless was a flop for me. Uh, one of my least favorite Amouage fragrances, I'm sad to say. Uh, but I will still wear it. I'll still give it a chance. I'll still eventually review it on my channel, and I'll still review this eventually. But if you're a tea lover, you know, now we're talking, we talked about tobacco and tea. We talked about coffee and tea. Now we're talking about champagne and tea. So interesting fragrance. Um, okay. Now we're going to go to my favorite, oh no, excuse me one moment. Now we're going to go to my favorite category of fragrances, which is leather. This is Salvatore Ferragamo. What is this? This is Testa di Moro. Testa di Moro. Uh, and this is from this little niche collection that Salvatore Ferragamo did that completely flopped. And uh, I think this is discontinued as well, believe it or not. Um, came out in 2014. Fabrice Pellegrin is the perfumer. So maybe this isn't 
uh, discontinued. Maybe the name has changed. I think maybe they changed it into a different name, or maybe maybe it is discontinued. I don't know. Um, but I have I I searched and searched and searched for this bottle forever, and I finally found it last year. Uh, there's an unboxing video on my channel about when I when I bought this. Um, so this is again from their little niche line. I need to give this a full wear soon, and it basically opens up like so. And there's the bottle with a little booklet that says just how awesome, you know, their Tuscan creations are. I think Testa di Morto basically means um, Tuscan scent or incense suede or I don't know what it means. But I do know that I, that um, this is a leather fragrance that I, that I really like. Um, I'm glad to have it because it is so hard to find. It took me forever to, to source this bottle. And this basically has frankincense and pink pepper with dried fruits with leather, saffron, and patchouli. And then the base has styrax, sandalwood, and that mate tea, that um, strong, bitter, um, uh, almost vegetal mate tea. Beautiful fragrance. Very happy to have it. Love the leather. The leather on the cap kind of gives you an indication of what it smells like, that brown leather right there. Um... They did a good job with this one. I think the rest of the line was a flop, but Testa di Morto for me is a win. And that's one that um, I think Persilés said he liked it. And that's one that I trusted his nose and just blind bought this. And I'm glad I did. So um, that is Testa di Morto in the Eau de Parfum. Next, we're going to go to one that I know is discontinued. Uh, um, and this is Trussardi Python Uomo. Now, when I think of tea fragrances, when I really think of tea fragrances, we're starting to get in the last four are serious tea fragrances. Serious, just, you know, put on your sweatshirt, you know, sit and look out the window and really contemplate things on a, on a, on a gloomy day, that kind of thing. Uh, but this has this freshness to it that you can definitely wear in the warmer weather. This has, this is a uh, Mediterranean fragrance I'm coming to realize. It really is. Tree bark with mulch and tea with olives and cypress leaf. Very, um, very uh, unique fragrance. Louise Turner created this fragrance and it, and it, she grounds it with bourbon vetiver and, um, I mentioned vetiver in the Oscar de la Renta as well. That vetiver keeps it masculine with this uh, very uh, 90s, early 2000s white musk in the base with teak wood and tonka bean. Teak wood's another very unique note. You hear a lot about cedar or guyac wood. You don't hear very much about teak wood. Uh, so this has teak wood with the, with the tea in the top. Such a great, unique, you know, if you want unique, that's the one to go for. My bottle is the Scannon version. That's the earlier version. It then switched to Selective Beauty. Uh, I always go for the earlier version if I can. Some people say that they are the same. I don't know. I can't speak for that. Uh, but Scannon is the earlier one before it switched to Selective Beauty. Okay, we're getting into the big dogs here. Now, this is one of my favorite, this, you know, before I discovered the fragrance that's going to be last, I would have probably said this is the perfect example of a tea scent for me. Just a fresh, you know, little bit spicy black tea that you can just throw on and just, you know, chill at home. This is Gucci Porom 2, the blue juice, the blue juice. You know, there is something to that blue juice that just screams, you know, relaxing. You're just maybe sitting by the beach or something, reading a book. I don't know. You just want some refreshing. You know, it puts you in a very contemplative state of mood. If you wanted to read a book, you could just wear Gucci Porom too. Sit in, sit in your house, sit in your office, read a book. You know, that kind of vibe. It has that. Uh, but there's also bergamot and violet leaf in this fragrance. 
uh, with pimento black tea cinnamon and then a base of myrrh, olive wood, tobacco, and musk. White musk, that famous white musk from the uh, 90s and, and early 2000s in the base. But that black tea with the cinnamon, and this is not a screamer either. This is a five-hour fragrance for me on my skin. That's it. I mean, five hours, it's gone. I reapply, which is fine, whatever. But um, really, really beautiful masculine scent. If you wore this out and just went to go have breakfast or something and people can still smell you in the first few hours, they will notice. It's a it's a beautiful fragrance. Um, you know, it is Gucci doing something different. This is 2007. This was done by a perfumer called Karine Dubrel Serini. I have no idea what else she's done, but she did a fantastic job with this fragrance. And again, olive wood in the base. I mentioned olives here and olive wood in Gucci Purim too. There's something to that. There's something to that relaxing vibe, at least to me anyways, that olive with tea, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's my heritage. I don't know, but there's something very relaxing to that. Okay. Um, a big dog, which I don't have a bottle that's good anymore, unfortunately. I had a bottle of this. I had a four ounce bottle. I used the entire thing. Uh, and I went to go buy another one. I bought it and, um, it, it ended up being bad. Um, but of course I bought it from a reputable seller, Anuj at Enchante, and he made me whole. He didn't charge me a thing for it. He said, keep it, you know, don't even worry about sending back. Just keep it. Uh, this is Creed's Silver Mountain Water. Now, this was supposed to be in the old four ounce presentation. Uh, and Silver Mountain Water, I believe this was also a Pierre Bourdon, but we don't know for sure. This is not one that's been verified, let's say. There's the bottle. The original four ounce bottle looked like that. And mine, if you take a look, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but uh, there's some... There was some weird stuff going on with the atomizer. Um, and so it, it is turned. Definitely the citruses and the and when you smell, you can just smell that rank smell. You know, Silver Mountain Water, the beautiful the beauty that was Silver Mountain Water is underneath. Like if you spray it on and wait an hour, an hour and a half, it, it that turned feeling goes away, but unfortunately it's turned. But it's a fresh citrusy scent, so that those turn the quickest. Uh, but this was bergamot, mandarin orange with narrowly, marine notes with green tea, black currant bud. So it was this, um, you know, fruity uh, tea fragrance basically with sand with Creed's creamy sandalwood and musk. It was a beautiful fragrance for the mid '90s because it was fresh but different from Aqua de Jo or something like that, and. Um, I keep it as a museum piece, but I won't wear it. It's 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 turned. But the one that has really I am smitten with, and Euro Rose said he's mesmerized by the tea in this fragrance, and I agree with him. It is a mesmerizing tea scent. And I have to thank some of the guys like Jonathan and Fosco and Eura for really pushing to go for me to go get this fragrance because you know, if you're closed-minded and you say, this is a women's scent, I won't buy it, you're you're really missing out, trust me. This is Amouage Epic Woman in the Eau de Parfum. Now, people say the X-Tray is beautiful. I, I've never smelled it. I, do, I did get a decant from Mood to Seer, so maybe I'll do a comparison video one day. But this is all I, I can tell you right now, this is all I need. This is, this, I, I just, my brain can't fathom improving on this. It's so good. The tea, I wore this the other day, and the tea just literally just grabs you with its, with its beauty. Uh, and it doesn't let go. The tea stays throughout the entire length of the fragrance. You get it in the top, you get it in the mid, you get it in the base. Even though it's listed as a heart note, it stays throughout the life of the fragrance. Now, as it dries, the heavier notes, of course, come through. So you get this, you know, melage of frankincense and vanilla and oud and stuff like that. But that tea note with the cinnamon and cumin uh, and pink pepper, the tea reminded me of the tea in Silver Mountain Water. When I had a full bottle that was good and wore it, for some reason, when I went out, I wore this inside most of the day working. 
But when I went outside, I had to go pick up something and I went in the car. And when I got in the car and rolled the windows down, the T note really almost like transformed into the, it reminded me of the T note in Silver Mountain Water, but placed in an amouage scent. So you have the T and then you have the beauty of amouage around that T. You have uh, some dirty cumin, some spicy cinnamon, but then one of the most beautiful damask rose smells I've ever smelled in here. Uh, and then that frankincense and patchouli and iris, the iris in this. If I sound like I'm waxing lyrically about this, it's because I am. Um, I love the men's version. It's right here somewhere. Um, but this really surprised me. And I, I have one other female amouage scent called Fate Woman, which I really love. I love this. It's If you love fragrances like YSL's Opium, check out Fate Woman. Oh, it's so good. Uh, but if you're a man, don't be scared of these. I can vouch for these too. Um, don't sell yourself short and just not buy them because it's a it's a it says Fate Woman on it. You you uh, are doing yourself a disservice if you do that. Trust me, these are absolutely unisex. Any niche house nowadays would market these unisex and. Um, you know, men would buy them and wear them, but because it says epic woman, they won't do it. And I love the presentation. It almost looks like, you know, um, the top of a religious temple or something. You know, doesn't it look like a temple with that gemstone on top? It's absolutely stunning. I love Amouage's presentation. Uh, and then they have, of course, the sun in the middle with Amouage's logo. It's just beautiful. One thing I will say is that this bottle is an old bottle before before uh, the switch over to this Sobco group. This only says Oman Perfumery right here. So the new ones will say Sobco slash Oman Perfumery. So there's some... There's some new stuff going on at Emwage. I, I can vouch for the original. The new stuff I've never compared, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is also, this would also be a relaxing scent for me. Um, so that is pretty much my tea list. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the unboxing. Um, I am very excited to get to wear some of this stuff. Um, Kevin, I really do appreciate it. I'm so excited to wear some of these little samples and test them and do first impressions. And I have so much stuff to do for my channel. It's unbelievable. You guys are just amazing. So thank you guys. Cheers. Appreciate you watching. Let me know what your favorite tea scents are. If there's some that I missed, obviously there's a lot of tea scents that I don't have. Um, so thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. Cheers. And I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye guys.